this one is a Q and A. So if you have any questions about veganism, if you have questions about activism, specifically about how to respond to certain arguments, or if there is something that you're not sure about, objection handling, again, arguments from non-vegans. If you're not vegan yet and you have a question about veganism, all of those questions can be answered on this live stream. We're gonna be live for the next hour. So yeah, start sending through your questions. How can I be vegan when I'm 13 and live in a family of non-vegans? I know it's possible, but tips please. Regardless of how old you are, I mean, 13 is not that young. You can stand your ground and you can let your parents know and your family know that these are your values. Explain to them why you made the decision to stop paying for animal cruelty or consuming animal exploitation and if it was a documentary or if it was footage that you watched that helps you make the connection maybe show that to them have a conversation about it but like i said stand your ground even if they can't make the connection and they're not ready to be vegan you're old enough to make that decision your family cannot force you to continue to consume animal products so ask them to prepare meals for you that are vegan or buy things for you that are vegan so that you can prepare your own food in terms of other products like clothing and beauty products and things like that you should do your research yourself because you're the one who's responsible for it and then tell your parents if they do the shopping for you so you need to do your own research and then let them know what you need and you're 13, I assume that obviously you're not working, you don't make your own money, but if you receive any money from your parents, if I was in your position, I would be saving my money so that I am financially independent to some degree so that if I want to buy myself a vegan product, I could just go and do that so you don't have to ask your parents every time. But when it comes to, you know, doing the shopping for the house and things like that, I'm sure they can buy veggies, rice, beans and things that you could eat. Hi, Sal. How do you feel about buying vegan products from non-vegan companies, food, makeup, clothing, etc.? I am completely for that. I think that when you buy a product, you're actually creating demand for that particular product. Although you're supporting the company and your money is going towards that company as a whole, but you are creating demand for that particular product. So I do encourage everyone to do that because veganism is still very small and many of these non-vegan companies have started doing a vegan line or a plant-based line or whatever it might be and that means that um, veganism is becoming a bit more mainstream and that's what we want so i do recommend that you support those particular products but just make sure that you pay attention sometimes, not so much with food, but maybe with makeup and beauty products and cosmetics and things like that. There is some confusion when it comes to vegan versus cruelty-free and plant-based. I think I recently heard that, I think it was Garnier or some other brand that released a product or a line that was marketed as vegan but it wasn't actually vegan it was just plant-based but it was still tested on animals so just make sure that you do your research before you buy these products from non-vegan companies what can i do when my partner of 12 years refuses to even think about going vegan what can you do the only thing you can do is to show them the truth encourage them to look into it and the rest is up to them I'm not sure what your question is exactly. We can't force people to accept the truth. We can only try to educate them and they will only accept it when they're ready to see it and to listen. So you might try for years and years and they may still not be convinced that veganism is the way to go. So what you need to do as an individual is to stand behind your own values and make a decision based on that. If you can't be with someone who's not vegan, then that's your decision. If you're okay with that, then continue to educate them. Advice to get family to go vegan, same thing. You just show them documentaries, show them the footage that we play at the cube, which shows exactly what happens to the animals, um, educate them, have conversations with them, 
Just like you outreach strangers on the street when you're at a cube, outreach your family. Ask them questions, make them think. That's all you can do. And if they're ready, they will listen, they will have a conversation, they'll look at their own actions, and when they're ready, they'll go vegan. But you have to keep educating them. Don't get disappointed, don't give up, just keep going. Keep talking to them, keep showing them stuff. Do you have to reach out? Joined once, holding up the signs, reaching out is so hard for me though. Yeah, so when you go to a cube for the first time, we actually ask you that you don't do any outreach, meaning you don't talk to the public for the first three cubes that you attend. So we ask that you stand in the cube, hold the sign or a screen, and when you need a break, you just come out and take a break. And then what you do is shadowing other outreaches. So those that have been doing it for a while and they're more confident, we ask that you shadow them, meaning you stand behind them while they're having a conversation with the public and you listen to them. That way you start to feel more confident and you learn how to do outreach at a cube. You might be someone who has done activism for a while, but when you go to the cube, you realize that we do outreach a certain way. We want everyone at the cube to follow those steps that we have and to do outreach AV style, which is basically just holding people accountable for their actions and asking questions. Our conversations are usually very short. So in the first five, 10 minutes, you know where that conversation is going. So that's why we want you as a new volunteer, if you attend, we want you to learn that outreach style first before you start doing outreach. If any, if you have done this before and you still don't feel comfortable, you just need to keep doing it. One thing that you could do, especially during this time, most people are staying at home for the most part, especially if you're in lockdown, just practice your outreach by going online and responding to comments. And then once you're at a cube, you'll feel more comfortable because you have heard all those arguments a million times and you know how to respond to them. I know that for some people it's a bit more uncomfortable because you're talking to someone face to face and especially if you have, you know, a bit of anxiety, you might feel like it's a bit of an awkward situation talking to someone, holding them accountable. Two things could happen. If you're just being straight up with someone and just telling them how it is, Either they are mature enough and honest enough with themselves that they're going to accept that and they're going to reflect on it and decide to change their behavior and change their actions because they can see that what you're saying is true and they'll be like, oh yeah, if I say that I'm against what I'm seeing on the screen and I'm paying for it, then I'm a hypocrite. They're either going to make that connection then or they're going to be defensive and they're probably going to walk off or they're going to throw a few arguments at you and then walk off. So that's the worst thing that could happen is someone raising their voice a bit because they're triggered and they're getting defensive and then walking off or you can walk away from them. But don't be scared and nothing scary is going to happen. Just keep practicing it and go talk to people. Again, if you have only done one cube, I recommend that you do shadow other outreaches for at least another two cubes or even three, do it as much as you need to so that you can actually walk up to someone and say hello and start the conversation. But at that point, then don't be afraid to do outreach and to experience that. If you have any particular arguments that you're struggling with and you don't know how to respond, then you can go and ask other outreaches or you can ask your organizer or I do these live streams regularly to help people with those arguments so you can ask your questions. Once you know how to respond to each argument, it becomes very easy because no matter what they throw at you, you just handle it and then you hold them accountable. That's it, that's outreach. How do you partake in activism without being pushy? <laughs> I feel like non-vegans call vegans pushy because they just want to be comfortable. They don't want to be held accountable and they don't want to be asked questions. They don't want to have to stop and think about their actions. That's why they call you pushy. When it comes to doing cubes, especially what we do, we are just standing in the middle of a street doing our own thing and we wait for people to come to us. So when somebody approaches us and they're watching the footage and they're asking questions or we approach them, we only engage with people that are interested in having a conversation. Even though they might be interested at the start and then they might get uncomfortable and defensive and they may want to run away, that's fine. But we only engage with those who are interested to begin with. 
it's not like we're running after them we're chasing people down the street and we're like come here come here come have a conversation with us so they actually come to us and we start the conversation and then at some point or this might happen online as well if people feel too uncomfortable because again you're holding them accountable and they have to look at their own actions and they have to be honest with themselves even if they don't admit it deep down if they are being honest and they can see the hypocrisy then they're going to start feeling uncomfortable because it is uncomfortable so then the way many people deal with that discomfort is to call you pushy and just ask you to shut up and they'll be like just be vegan if you want to be vegan be vegan and respect my choice i respect your choice to be vegan you have to respect this is my journey blah 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 so it's not that you're doing anything wrong you should be speaking up in a way that if you were in the animal's position you would have wanted someone to speak up for you so you don't want to dilute the message you don't want to be too soft you don't want to be walking on eggshells around people try not to bother them and not to offend them and things like that because this is an injustice you're speaking up against so of course you need to be strong about it that makes people uncomfortable that's why they call you pushy it's got nothing to do with you you need to continue speaking up for the animals the way they deserve it whether it's online engaging in a conversation or on the street whatever form of activism you're doing telling people the truth and not backing down for example let's say you're at a cube you're showing them the footage and they feel awful and then you hold them accountable and you bring them to the conclusion that they're a hypocrite for supporting what they're saying they're against because most people say i'm against animal cruelty and then you ask them they're like yes i do eat chicken and fish sometimes for example and then at some point in that conversation that person might say okay i'm going to go vegetarian for a while or i'm gonna start my journey to veganism if you say as an activist that's not good enough and explain to them why then they're gonna label you as pushy because they're gonna be like well why can't she just be happy that i'm making steps in the right direction again because you're making them feel uncomfortable because it's like a big change to them and they're not ready to commit to that so they're gonna blame you for it they're gonna try to make make you feel bad and and call you pushy or annoying but that's only because you're doing the right thing so being pushy just means being persistent and assertive and that's what it is so continue doing what you're doing how do you respond to someone who says it's not their time to become vegan i hate that answer yeah so i was just talking about this regardless of how much you talk to people and you show them documentaries and stuff if that person is not ready they're not going to go vegan we know that it all comes down to whether that person's ready or not even if they feel guilty or even if they admit to being a part of the problem whatever it might be but deep down they have to be ready and convinced for them to be vegan that person that says it's just not their right time to be vegan it's someone who is just being honest about that and again there isn't any like magical trick that you can do in that moment the only thing that i would say is just be mindful that for as long as you are taking baby steps towards veganism these animals are being raped tortured and murdered just for you so you can sit down and eat a sandwich or buy a leather bag or whatever it might be that you're supporting so as long as you're taking your time with it these animals are being tortured and murdered just for you as an individual and you're responsible for that that's all you can say how do you respond to someone who says going vegan won't help animals because the government subsidizes the meat industry the government does that because there is a demand for those products so animal flesh and dairy products they receive subsidies because there is a huge demand for it and once veganism becomes more mainstream and there is more demand for it the government would either drop those subsidies or would start subsidizing non-dairy products so vegan products and that's why we need to keep doing what we're doing and that's why we also need to continue to create demand for vegan products can you start two chapters in the same city it depends how close these chapters are going to be to each other so just email us 
email us and we'll figure it out. Join at j o i n at anonymous for the voiceless dot org. Send us an email and we'll see how close these chapters or cities are. Is it okay to use human slavery as an analogy to animal industry? Yes, it is. If it makes sense, use it. Yeah, don't just throw it around willy nilly. It has to make sense. It has to make sense for that particular conversation or that person that you're talking to. But I'm not against using human slavery. I'm not against using the word rape. I'm not against using the word holocaust. All of these words can be used to prove your point and to help that person understand the injustice better if it makes sense for that conversation. Why do you all compare killing animals to gay rights or BLM? That's a really good question. I would understand that as a non-vegan, you may not understand why we do this, but what's happening to the animals, and it has been happening for a very long time, is an injustice. Much like what has been happening to black people or gay people, also in other injustices that you see when it comes to human rights issues. So that's why sometimes we compare animal exploitation, especially what's happening with animal agriculture, to those movements to point out、um, the injustice and the fact that these animals have been exploited and.、Um, Oppressed for the longest, humans have always exploited and oppressed these animals, and it's been going on for the longest. And you could argue that's the biggest injustice in terms of the number of victims, so the number of individual animals that are being exploited, raped, tortured, and killed. You can't even wrap your head around that number, and that's why in that. Way it could be the biggest. I think, in fact, it is the biggest injustice in terms of the number number of victims.、Um, so even though you might find it weird that animal rights activists make the comparison because you're like we're humans, they're animals. Yes, we're just different species, but that doesn't mean that because we're humans, we have the right to oppress and exploit those animals just because they look different to us. And for many people, if they have been oppressed, for someone who's gay or for a black person who has gone through that, or even as a woman who has been oppressed, those people a lot of times tend to be able to understand this better because they have experienced it firsthand, and they have seen it happen to themselves or people around them. So they're able to make that connection easier with the animals, and they get the injustice better. Thank you so much for anyone who joined me for this live stream. Thank you, Laura. Appreciate you always being here. Yeah, take care, everyone. Keep doing activism if you can. Much love, and see you later.